So today, I wanna to help some people get started on their dropshipping journey. My goal is that when you finish watching this video, then you'll turn off YouTube and you actually start building your business right away. So after speaking to quite a few people who are interested in dropshipping, but don't really know where to start, it's because they don't know what products they wanna sell, um, or at least what niche they wanna sell in. At least if you have a niche, then you have a direction, a focus, a purpose, and you can kind of build a vision in your head of what your business is gonna look like, and then you can go out there and start building it. So that's what I'm gonna help you do in this video today. I'm gonna to cover three of my favorite niches for this time of year. They're super relevant and trending for this time of year, so they're definitely um, some of the easier niches to get started in and start seeing some results right out of the gate. It also goes without saying we're at quite a important time of year with Q4 around the corner. Um, Q4 is quite special for me. I won't bore you with my whole life story, but it was Q4 2016, which was really successful for me. It allowed me to kind of set myself up financially, leave my job and do e-com full time. Um, and I truly believe that anybody with the right tools and kind of determination um, can, can do the same thing. So regardless of what your goals are, whether it's to make a little bit extra each month to save up for the holiday or get a new car or just pay off some debts or just to help with the cost of living crisis here in the UK at the moment, um, then I'm a firm believer now is a great time to get started. We still have time to kind of put a store together, test a few different products, see what works, and just really put yourself in a position where you can make the most of Q4. But I definitely want you to get started sooner rather than later. Something else I just want to touch on ever so quickly before we jump into it, because it's quite important, and I see a lot of people doing it, is falling foul to analysis paralysis. You will not have the answer to every single question ever. Even after six years now, there'll still be stuff that comes across my desk or phone calls I get um, where I'm like, shit, I don't know what to do. How am I going to deal with this? Um, but it's just part of the process. It's going to happen to you regardless of whether you like it or not. Um, you're not going to learn how to run a successful business by watching video after video on YouTube. At some point, you're going to have to start your business and learn those and learn from those mistakes and deal with those problems which you encounter so you may as well start that now so you can cross and come to them and overcome them sooner rather than later so enough of the motivational speech let's get into the reason why you clicked on this video which is my top three niches to start selling in today niche number one my favorite niche ever when it comes to drop shipping is the toy niche and for the following reasons so number one is it's an evergreen niche what this basically means is that there's always new people, there's always new customers coming into the niche, so you always have new customers to target who want to buy your customers. With the toy niche, it's pretty, I mean, it goes without saying, as children are born and grow up, um, as people become parents, they have to buy all these new things to accommodate for their children, and toys are one of those things. Number two, good price points for the products you can sell and therefore profitability. So it goes without saying that drop shipping, especially from China and the likes of AliExpress, carries this stigma of cheap, tacky plastic products, but that doesn't always have to be the case. And in the toy niche, you can help avoid those types of products because even if you do drop ship from China, from AliExpress, you can go on there now and you can find some really high quality products which you can sell for that kind of medium price range. And when I say medium price range, then I mean sort of 40, 50 pounds all the way up to 100 pounds, which is totally fine when you're advertising on platforms like Facebook. The third reason, and also a really important reason why I like this niche so much, this reason, in fact, is a reason which I will apply to any niche which I decide to sell on if I'm going to be selling on Facebook, and that is that it fits the perfect target market. So ever since my first kind of successful few months back in 2016, since then, repeatedly, the best customers for me, and regardless of what niche I've been in, have been females over the age of 50 and the toy niche fits this perfectly. So we're not necessarily gonna be targeting the parents themselves, but we're actually gonna be targeting the grandparents. And the reason why this is so good is because, for a number of reasons really, but just the kind of the most important ones. Number one, Facebook is an aging demographic. Number two, pensioners, dare I say, or people of an older generation, when they're retired at least, they tend to be the people who have a bit of spare cash. And point number three, grandparents love to spoil their grandchildren. It's just a fact. I can promise you this from first-hand experience recently. 
Um, every single day, almost daily, we are getting parcels arriving from my parents, from my wife's parents, for things that they want to spoil our child with. So it's definitely a perfect target market, um, especially for Facebook. Last but not least, then, before we move on to the next niche, I just want to touch on the types of products, um, in my opinion, work best within this niche. Try and stay away from things that have screens, things that involve technology. Um, people won't buy things that they don't understand. So if you're gonna be targeting that kind of grandparent um, age range or age bracket, they didn't grow up with screens and therefore they're probably gonna stay away from buying things like tablets um, or anything like that. Stick to educational and stick to developmental products if that's even a word. So when I say this, these are products, physical products that a child can do things with. So when I grew up as a child, we had things like connects, things like Lego. So think of toys um, that kids can build things with or um, destroy things with or just have fun with where the parents and grandparents can join in as well. And if you can get a really solid product with a really cool ad and put it in front of a recently new grandparent, then you're definitely going to be onto a winner. Niche number two is also one of my favorite niches. If you've been following me for a while, I've made quite a bit of money in this niche, which is the LED niche. Um, or more specifically, the LED safety niche. So here in the UK, the nights are already getting younger. Um, it's getting dark in and around sort of half seven. It won't be long before it's dark by the time people finish work. So think of the sort of things that people are now doing in the dark, which they weren't before. They're things like walking or hiking or running or exercising or cycling or commuting to and from work. And there's products which fit those individual niches themselves. Um, to help with safety that you can put in front of them, which they might just see and in the price right price range, but they'll actually, I'll do that because one day it could genuinely save my life or stop me from being in an accident, which is the fourth point actually, but I've already touched on it, which is there's an emotional marketing angle. There's a legitimate reason why somebody would actually buy that product. It's not because it looks good or it's cool, it's because it genuinely could save them from harm. Um, in the darkness when they're out and about. Point number two is the LED safety niche is applicable to so many other niches. So I already touched on people who go out running or cycling or people who have to commute, um, pet niches as well. Um, people who have to walk their dog after or before work will have to do it in the dark now. So there's certain products again within that niche which you can put in front of a person um, which they can use to help keep their pets safe. Last but not least, it is eye grabbing. Some of the most successful dropshipping products in history have been LED products. And the reason being is because they make a cool effect. Simple as when somebody's watching a video, if there's a cool effect, which is eye grabbing and attention grabbing, they're much more likely to actually consume and stop and consume and watch that video. Um, and therefore it's gonna be an effective marketing campaign and you're gonna get traffic onto your store or pretty cheaply. So the third and final niche which I want to go over is the jewelry niche. Now this does come with a word of caution because it's super important on the actual products that you pick inside but I'll cover that in a second. First of all let's go over the positives. So number one it is really really popular over the Christmas period. It peaks kind of early December. So if in fact if I just show you the Google Trends information just quickly. So we've got the three niches which I'm talking about here. We can see they all sort of go up and peak um, in the period in which we're coming into now. Toys is just ridiculous as we can see here now. It just spikes in popularity massively. Even when it's not in season, it's still more popular than in these other two niches. I touched on that, it's an evergreen niche, a brilliant niche, a toy one. If I actually just remove this, then we'll see the better effects of LED light and jewelry. And we can see here jewelry spikes massively again even when it's not in season it's still a pretty popular niche the second reason why i'm going to recommend this niche is it's very flexible within the jewelry niche the jewelry is kind of like a mega niche if you like within it there's lots of different sub niches so obviously you can have pet jewelry jewelry for grandparents um, jewelry for your boyfriend or girlfriend and that is where this kind of word of caution comes in don't go out there and try and sell just generic watches that aren't branded um, cheap and people can kind of smell them a mile off as just being cheap Chinese brands. Make sure the piece of jewelry which you're selling has a purpose for the person in which you're going to be advertising it to. So I can't remember if I mentioned it earlier on in the video, but sometimes where people fall at the first hurdle is they'll try and pick a product and then find somebody to sell it to. But if you actually reverse that process and actually 
pick the person and then find the products for it. Sometimes that's an easier exercise or an easier way to think of it. So if we go back to that grandparent example, um, if you find a piece of jewelry on AliExpress from a grandson to a grandparent, um, then it's just a match made in heaven. Last but not least then to round off the jewelry niche is the good profit margins. So as long as you can put a really professional and well-designed Shopify store together, and do the same for your products and present them in a professional way, maybe even a luxurious manner, and then you can charge a premium for these products. I've discovered TikTok ads where people have been selling pieces of jewelry for like 60, 70 pounds, and then you can find it on AliExpress for less than 10. So that just gives you a rough idea um, of the potential of the jewelry niche. So with that being said then, I hope this video helps. I hope it's given you some ideas and some directions to consider. But more importantly, I hope after watching this video, you will number one, subscribe to my YouTube channel and number two, actually get off of YouTube and go out there, start putting together a vision board or at least start picturing in your head the kind of business you want to start um, and actually start building it. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.